Back inside our Bison Video Blog Studios, we've reached the end of our newcomer series with a guy that's been touted for a while. He also could have played last year in 2016. Bison coaches decided to redshirt him, and I think a lot of fans, Jeff, are eager to see number 42 on the field. We finish off with a linebacker from Raytown, Missouri, Jabril Cox, who had an outstanding spring, and he could really splash on the field this fall. You talk to Chris Kleiman, and the number one thing he'll tell you about this guy is he's got the length. They love his length, at outside linebacker. He's 6'3", hmm. 230, and that was just last year, too, so who knows what he is. Let me give you some numbers here, Don. Okay. 3,107. He was a quarterback in high school. <laughs> he accounted for 3,107 yards of total offense. He passed for 2,103 yards and ran for 1,004 yards. What's that tell you? He's, he's got, an athlete. He's got he great speed, athlete. too. Yeah. And I think this is a spot. Now, at linebacker, Jeff, with the get DeLuca back, Matt Plank back, and I thought Chris Board had a really good spring. You told me to pump the brakes on this guy during spring ball. That those no are the longer. three. No longer. Nope. Brakes think, are off. No, really? You think yep. that he? I could, think he's that good. Will he be a starter in 2017? I don't think he's a, no, you're going to start the senior board, and and okay. the senior board deserves it because he's really put in the time since moving over from safety, and really, I, I think what he's he done did during the spring game, though. I mean, eight got, tackles in the spring team, and including a sack there, like you saw, he got the fans' attention, and he's been on everybody's radar. I think since he verbally committed that this was a guy that was. Could be really, really good. Anyway, finish your point well, there. For I three, four years, for three, four years, we've been talking about okay, depth at is there depth at linebacker? <laughs> and you're thinking, okay, this guy is going to play. Well, we got to play more guys. Yep. You know, you hear that from the coaches. Got to play more guys. I think this is a finally the year. This is finally the year okay. where they're going to play more guys <laughs> because of this guy. Well, it's also the wild card because Deluca can play anywhere, and they're probably going to they're going to move Nick to the outside with Kip and Plank in the middle. But if you saw it. Jabril Cox's speed that he can probably play is once he learns the defense in full, I think he can go anywhere on the field as well. I really believe that with the, how fast The he game is. to look forward to is Eastern Washington because yep. they're going to head out to Cheney, Washington, yep. and they're going to play against this high flying offense who's going to throw it all over the place. Mm. And you're going to want these linebackers who have depth and, and who could create depth and who have the length to really, I think, create havoc in the defensive passing game. You're not going to see Matt Plank much in the Eastern Washington game just because he's a physical inside linebacker or run stopper. You're going to see DeLuca, I think, more there. I agree you're with gonna, you. And you're going to see a guy like Jabril Cox with a chance, I think, to really be a playmaker. We know he's got the same height as Nick DeLuca. DeLuca's about 20 pounds on him now. I'm not saying he's a future DeLuca, but he's got the frame and I think he's got the athleticism that three years from now, we're talking about this guy being an All-American. I really think he could be that good. I do. I believe that. You can tell me to pump the brakes no, now. No, I'm, I'm telling you, let the I, no brakes. Let it go. No brakes. Let the throttle out. He can. I really think he can be that good, and it starts this season. I don't think he's going to start. I'm with you. I think that they've got the three seniors up there in the in the linebacker core that they want, but you're going to see number 42 if unless he changes his number. You're going to see him on the field quite a bit this fall. I really believe. I think that. you have to just on just the way he. And again. Adapting to that defense isn't that easy. No, but if you can do that, and you got maybe a couple games where you can really get in and get some experience, he sees the field. So those are our five guys. Is there anybody on here that you th that we left off of the either the guys that redshirted last year or maybe the incoming class to say they could possibly get into our well, you always or, hear, like an honorary honorary yeah, member. You always hear about these classes being great every year. I mean, who doesn't say their yeah, class Yeah, everybody is great. has a great class. But this will be a <laughs> tail of the tape now because everybody is redshirted. We saw none of them. Yes. So everybody is redshirted in this freshman class. We'll see who can see the field. And I think we'll, you'll find out on special teams more than anything. That's Yeah, that's a good point there. I think there's a couple other offensive linemen. They really like Ben Hecht. He's a big kid. Uh, they got out of Kansas. Uh, a couple years ago, he was 6'5", 282, that was going into uh, into fall camp. Now, I'll throw a name at you, and he may not play. There's two guys. Michael Tootsie, who is the safety out of Indiana. The other is Noah Gindorf, who is obviously the high-profile guy uh, out of Crosby, Minnesota, that, that they get on campus. I think Tootsie may have a shot to play. I don't know about Gindorf. He's in a spot that's really blocked in tight end. There, there's a lot of depth there, too. Yep. Are you saying a tight end? Noah Gindar is going to be in the NFL in five years. Woo! Wow. Now, oh, that's a way to end our series right there. You're calling him an NFL guy? He hasn't, he hasn't right played now. a down of college calling football? calling him out right now. This wow. is the newcomer of the newcomers blog. <laughs> Mark it down, folks. It's on tape. He's calling him an NFLer 
in five years. But that wraps up our series of the newcomers to watch for Bison football for 2017.